Today we're going to be harvesting 25 different varieties of peppers. It's been getting really cold here and I'm finally just accepting the fact that the season's over. If you're new to growing, if you're just thinking about growing, or if you're just interested in peppers in general, this is going to be an awesome video for you because as I go through and harvest each variety, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about each one and you're going to get a general idea of what a harvest is going to look like first one is going to be one that all of you should be familiar with. It is a habanero pepper. These range from 100,000 to 350,000 Scoville heat units. They start out as green, they end up red. They're originated in the Amazon and they are named after the Cuban city of Havana. Havana. Havana? Havana. These are used a lot in sauces and between the four different plants that we grew this year they were extremely prolific and we ended up with just tons of frozen and dehydrated peppers. We'll be using them a lot for powders and sauces this winter. And overall, it was just a really awesome plant to grow. This next one is gonna be the Boot Jalokia, otherwise known as the Ghost Pepper. This is over 1 million Scoville heat units. In 2007, this was the world's hottest pepper, but since then it's been beaten several times over. These plants get very large, I would say over four feet tall. This is one of the largest pepper plants that we actually had. The name comes from Boot, meaning ghost in the Assam language. We've seriously had so many of these peppers this season with the four plants that we've had. And this is a lot like the habanero peppers. We dried them, we froze them, and we're gonna be using them for powders and sauces this winter. Cow horn pepper, this is 2,500 to 5,000 Scoville heat units, and it's about the same heat as an average jalapeno. These go from green to red, and kind of looks like just an overgrown large cayenne pepper. These are great for powders and sauces and just cooking in general. They're about six to eight inches long. The plants are about up to three feet tall. And honestly, this is a pepper that we bought from Walmart after another variety we had died. And we didn't really have very high expectations for it. It ended up being a super prolific and awesome pepper. We froze them with all of our cayennes and everything because we're gonna be making a mild cayenne hot sauce this winter and we're gonna be throwing these cow horns in with that just to give us some bulk some of that good cayenne flavor 100 we're about to butcher this name but this is the bondama jocks bondama jacks jocks i think it's jocks these are about 300,000 scoville heat units and they're kind of just a rare habanero variety and they are also from the caribbean they're kind of tangy citrusy kind of a fruity scent with great flavor but just kind of a little bit too hot for just your everyday cooking, kind of like a habanero. These peppers are bright yellow, kind of almost an orange color. I really had high hopes for this plant, but this is honestly the first harvest we've had from it at all this year. The peppers took just so long to set, and then after they set, they took so long to ripen, and they never really got big. I mean, these are just kind of little mini peppers, and from everything I saw online, they're supposed to get bigger than this, and I think this plant just struggled overall but I will say that this harvest is better than no harvest and I'm excited to see what these taste like. This one is the Trinidad Scorpion Yellow. This isn't gonna be quite as hot as the original Trinidad Scorpion, but this is still gonna be very hot. This is about 850,000 plus Scoville heat units. These are gonna be bright yellow with kind of a sweet and fruity taste. That's gonna be the taste you get right off the bat, but then it's gonna punch you in the face with the heat that it has. These are slightly bigger peppers than the original, Trinidad Scorpion, which is pretty cool that they're pretty big pods, I would have to say, from what we saw this year. This is a very productive variety. This plant was, it's kind of funny, this plant was right next to our yellow scotch bonnets. For most of the season, I mistook this plant for a scotch bonnet. So there's definitely some of these Trinidad Scorpion yellows in our freezer right now, labeled as scotch bonnets. And it's gonna be a spicy surprise for either me or my wife. We're gonna find out at some point. <laughs> Either way, this pepper is seriously so cool and I'm definitely gonna be growing it next year. Next is the Yellow Scotch Bonnet. This one ranges from 100,000 to 350,000 Scoville heat units. This is also a Caribbean pepper. This one is from Jamaica and this just has like a sweet heat, awesome flavor, really good for Jamaican jerk. The thick walls are good for long cooking times for like jerks and curries and stews and all sorts of stuff like that. The plant isn't huge, it's about three to four feet tall. And honestly, this is one of my favorite peppers to grow just because of how prolific they are and how you can use them in pretty much everything. Just last week, Jemay made this awesome, awesome pasta that she cut one of these up into and she just fried it all up in there with the pasta and the sausage and just all of it. And it was seriously so good. 
you can pretty much put this pepper into anything and it's gonna make it good. It's one of those peppers that you don't really have to freeze or dry if you don't want to because you can find something to use it in if you really want to. Sugar Rush Peach, this is one of Jamae's favorite peppers. This one is 100,000 to 150,000 Scoville heat units. This is just a really sugary, sweet, tropical, kind of smoky flavor. Chris Fowler in Wales originally made this accidentally by open, it was kind of an open pollinated accident. Is this thing takes so long to ripen. This is our first harvest from this plant. I seriously have hundreds of these peppers, but only about 15% of them ever actually ripened. So that's kind of annoying, but they're still super awesome pepper and worth growing. Right now I've got the peppers, the plants, I ripped them up out of the ground and I hung them upside down and I'm really hoping that I can just force them to ripen. Ask anybody that's ever grown these peppers, they're gonna tell you that these take forever to ripen, but it's 100% worth it. They are seriously one of a kind pepper. It's starting to get pretty dark. I think I'm gonna call it a day for today and finish this up tomorrow. As I'm going, I'm just kind of ripping out all the plants because I'm not gonna get anything else out of these plants. I am gonna get a really good harvest this time around. This is gonna be it for my season. So I'm gonna bring these inside and tomorrow I'm gonna finish up with the rest of these back here and then the season's over. <sighs> peach Boot Jalokia Peach Ghost Pepper. This is about 1 million Scoville heat units, so a pretty hot pepper. They ripen from kind of a green to then a light pink, and if you let them stay on the plant too long, they turn to an orange. This has more of a smooth flavor than the original. It's kind of slightly fruity, and this is a natural variation of the original Boot Jalokia. I honestly thought this plant was dead at the beginning of the season. It just stayed small and scraggly and really didn't do a whole lot. I didn't think it was gonna make it. Eventually, it finally grew to what 18 inches tall, something like that, and loaded up with peppers. So turned out all right. This is, I think this is the first real harvest we've had from this plant. But when you take into consideration where it started, I'm pretty happy with that. This is the white ghost. And for some reason, this one is just straight the white ghost rather than the white boot jalokia. I don't really know why, but that's just the way it is. This is 1 million Scoville heat units. They start off kind of a light green and then they turn to kind of like this peachy-ish color, and then they turn straight white, which is pretty cool. The plants get to be about four feet tall. The pods are about two inches. They're really great for sauce. They're kind of like a sweeter version of the original Boot Jalokia, but the flavor, I guess, it's kind of a little bit bitter. There's two phenotypes of the white ghost. One of them is this kind of like smooth, round one, which is what I have. And then there's this super awesome one that is long and skinny and bumpy and just mean looking. And that's the one that I want. I thought that's what I had. I was wrong. <laughs> I still grew it. I still enjoyed it. I probably won't be growing this next year just because I really want to find a different phenotype. It's still pretty cool. I still enjoyed it. Not growing it next year. Infinity Pepper. This is 1 million Scoville heat units. And this was created in England by Nicholas Woods of Fire Foods. He accidentally crossed it with something else in his greenhouse. We're not sure what. And for a little while, this is the hottest pepper in the world in 2011, but it was dethroned by the Trinidad Butch Tea Scorpion. This has a fruity taste, but don't let it fool you. It's very, very hot. We ordered two plants and ended up getting two different colors of peppers. Both plants produced a lot of different pods. We're not really complaining. I mean, we had, they were the same size. They were the same shape. They were the same everything other than color. We had red pods and we had chocolate pods. We ended up just freezing both of them with the rest of our red and chocolate pods and we'll end up using them for sauces. Either way, both plants were super prolific and gave us a ton of peppers and I'm not complaining. I was happy with my two different colored infinity peppers this year. <laughs> seven pot yellow. This is pretty much just the same thing as the seven pot, only it's the yellow version. It is over 1 million Scoville heat units. And I really wish we had more of these this season for me to tell you about them because this is a pretty much the only harvest we've had of them. But really, we didn't really, we didn't have a whole lot from this plant. The plant was super healthy, it grew, it was awesome. It just didn't really set pods. It didn't give us a whole lot. It didn't give me any reason to really save seeds and try again next year. Brain Strain Red, up to 1.3 million Scoville heat units. And this come from the seven pot, but it was selectively bred for its desired wrinkly kind of brain-like traits. It's used in soups and stews and stuff like that for its smoky flavor. This plant has hardly produced anything at all for us, but with that being said, what it did produce was pretty amazing. These pods came out super bumpy and just like mean looking. Honestly, one of my 
favorite looking pods. This tiny little wrinkled mean looking thing and just looking at it, you knew that if you bit into it, you were gonna regret it. <laughs> now it's time for the Brain Strain Yellow and this one gets up to 1.5 million Scoville heat units maybe. It was kind of hard for me to find any information about that online. <laughs> this is the yellow version of the Brain Strain Red. Honestly, these peppers surprised me. They grew a ton of peppers, they looked awesome, and they're gonna be amazing in sauces. They weren't nearly as bumpy or mean looking as the reds, but they were still a really cool pepper. The sides kind of grew down over the stinger and just made for this really cool look, even though the skin was smoother than the brain strain red. <laughs> it was still a super awesome pepper to grow, and I will most likely be growing this next season. Chocolate Brain Strain. This one is 1.3 million Scoville heat units, and this is crossed with the Trinidad Maruga Scorpion in the Seven Pot Brain Strain. Of the Brain Strains, this one is probably one of the coolest, the way the pods are shaped and how bumpy they got, and really just the whole look of this pepper. It's this small, dark, bumpy, wrinkly thing with this little stinger. It just looks like a scary pod. <laughs> I mean, when it's growing on the plant, I mean, it was a really prolific plant. It grew a ton of peppers for us. Just seeing all those pods on the plant, you knew that it was gonna be a very hot pepper just by looking at it. If you're sleeping by this point, I need you to really just pay attention to this part, okay? Are you listening? Okay, thanks. <laughs> this one is the Primo Tally. Primo, Primo Tally, Primo Tally, Primo Tally, Primo Tally, Primo Tally. This is the number one plant that I was excited for this season. Everything I'd heard about it, I was seriously so excited to grow this plant. The coolest looking pepper I have ever seen in my whole life. Nobody really knows about the Scoville heat units, but apparently it's supposed to rival the Carolina Reaper. If you know who Johnny Scoville is, he says that it is the hottest pepper he has ever eaten in his life. And if anybody knows hot stuff, it is probably that guy. <laughs> These peppers start up green and they turn to just this bright red with this skin that looks like it is boiling. They have this giant stinger of a tail that can get over an inch long. This is a cross between a seven pot primo and a fatale by Chris Saunders in 2012. And this is the first half harvest we've gotten from them. None of these pods are even actually ripe. They're half red-ish. <laughs> These are the coolest peppers I grew this year by far. Primo Yellow. This is 1.5 million Scoville heat units. This is the yellow version of the Seven Pot Primo from Troy Primo. This is a more sweet and citrusy version of the Seven Pot Primo and not quite as hot. This plant did all right. We had a decent amount of peppers come from it, but honestly, nothing that really stood out to me. I'm still very excited to use this in some sauces this winter, but I probably won't be growing this again next year. Big Mustard Mama. This is a 1 million Scoville heat unit pepper that goes from a green to a dark green to just this nasty mustardy yellowy color. This is created by Troy Primo. This is a cross between the Naga Morich and the Trinidad Dugla. These just put off huge pods with a wide variety of shapes and sizes. These two plants were by far the biggest plants we grew this season. Even with trying to prop them up with stakes, they still just toppled over under the weight of all the pods. Carolina Reaper. This is 2.2 million Scoville heat units and is currently the hottest pepper in the world. The hottest proven pepper in the world. <laughs> this is a cross bead from Ed Curry and it is between the uh, Honestly, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. I'm gonna just put the word up here on the screen because I, can't, I just can't. <laughs> and the Naga Viper Pepper. One of our plants threw out pods that look closer to our seven pots, but the other two plants gave us some really awesome, typical looking Carolina Reapers. As always, we're gonna grow this next year. I mean, it's the hottest pepper in the world. Really a super awesome pepper. We're gonna grow it next season, always. <laughs> at least for the foreseeable future. Dragon's Breath. Dragon's breath. Dragon's breath. <laughs> All right, so the Scoville heat units on this is honestly nobody knows. Every website that I went to said that this was at 2.48 million Scoville heat units, but this has been proven nowhere. Honestly, I originally got this pepper for a laugh to see what the fuss was all about because 
like I said, the articles were saying that if you eat this pepper, it will kill you. And they had it at 2.48 million Scovilles. But this pepper is a real pepper. Honestly, this ended up being a huge producer and we'll be using it alongside our Carolina Reapers in all of our powders and sauces and stuff like that. It really surprised me with how many peppers it grew. Even though there was this huge fuss and it was this crazy dragon's breath pepper. It's a pretty cool pepper. I, I, I don't know if it's hotter than the Carolina Reaper, but still pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna grow it next year, we'll see. Chocolate Bootla. This is two million Scoville heat units. This is a cross between the Boot Jaloka and the Chocolate Dougla. Three to four foot plant really gave us a ton of peppers this year. We'll be using these in some of our darker sauces and powders. I'm probably gonna grow it next year. I liked it a lot. It was a cool pepper. I'm gonna grow it. I mean, it, it's nothing that really like stands out above everything else, but it's a high producing chocolate pod that is extremely hot. Probably gonna grow it again. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and say we're gonna grow it again. <laughs> Hurtberry, the Scoville heat units are unknown. Nobody really knows. This was created by Graham Lee Warburton. It started out as a reaper crossed with a jigsaw, and then it was crossed with a Marugo UV. These are dark red pods with these wrinkles and bumps that just make it look really mean and nasty. These plants are over three feet tall, and they produce a lot of peppers. These are very prolific plants. These are fruity flavored tones, but seriously hot, hot, hot pepper. This pepper won me over this year. It was just a super crazy pepper, and we got a couple of phenotypes that we really liked a lot. So we'll be saving seeds from both of those phenotypes and probably growing both of them next year. We grew two plants this year, but to me it wasn't enough. This was one of my favorite peppers to grow this year. Big Black Mama. This is a 1 million Scoville heat unit pepper. It is a dark brown, very bumpy, nuclear hot pepper. It's a cross between a Naga Morich, Morich, Morich? and a seven pot Trinidad Dougla. This was also created by Troy Primo. It has a sweet fruity flavor with citrus tones. It produces a lot of big, hot peppers. This plant grows up to four feet tall. Pods are about two inches long. And honestly, this was probably the coolest chocolate pod we grew this year. The shapes they threw out with the bumpy skin, they really just made from awesome looking pepper. They have this really thick, weird looking tail that grows and it's just a unique looking pepper compared to the other chocolate pods that we had. If I had to pick any of our chocolate pods this year to grow again next year, it would definitely be this one. Bahamian goat. This one surprised me. <laughs> I had heard so much about this pepper and I had I had never tried it myself and finally I gave it a shot and it paid off. This, this plant turned into one of my favorites of the year by far. These peppers are up to 300,000 Scoville heat units and they're just this awesome sweet flavor. I would say better than a habanero, but about the same heat level. The plants reach about four feet tall and they kind of look like just these little UFO slash pumpkins. <laughs> these peppers started off really slow for us this year. They didn't really do a whole lot and they just kind of sat back in the corner and I didn't really think much of them. And then halfway through the year, they exploded. Just won me over. They just they just won my, my little heart over. UFO, stinger. And I'm probably going to be using it in future crossing projects and cross them with other things to try to get the same UFO stinger shape because that is now my favorite shape of pepper. I love it. This has been by far the best pepper season of my life. I was able to test myself with growing and watering and feeding all these plants and I have this new awesome garden that I was able to grow in and I can't tell you enough how grateful I was for this season. It sucks that it's over. But even though the outdoor season is over, this is just the beginning of what we're going to be doing here. This is the beginning of the indoor pepper growing season. And I'd really love for you to join me in all the awesome things we're going to be doing here. 2021 season is over, but we're just getting started. That means your season is probably over as well. If you have any plants that are still sitting outside that aren't quite dead yet and you want to dig them up and bring them inside, watch this video right here because I'm going to show you exactly how you can bring those plants inside over the winter and then plant them back outside next season.